this is the exercise I want all of us to do uh, this morning. So basically this exercise, um, I want us to apply um, the principles. So first of all, please see, can you see transaction one? So transaction one is saying to us, uh, transaction one, um, we're going to look at transaction one. Um, it's saying Mr. Bongile Sitole, a qualified electrici electrician, started a small service business. Um, so his business name is BS Electric Electrical. On the 1st of Jan 2021, he decided to deposit 40,000 in the entity's bank account to start the business. So, guys, this is the first transaction that I'm going to be asking you uh, about. So, first of all, the question I'm having um, regarding that first transaction that happened what is the source document? What is the source document that? So basically in this exercise, you are the bookkeeper of this company. So you are the bookkeeper of the company. And when you are the bookkeeper of the company, what source? So transaction one, so you are the bookkeeper for Mr. Bongile Sitoli. So Mr. Bongile Sitoli started a small, a small service business, is a qualified electrician. So the, the first transaction is he decided to deposit 40,000 in the entity's bank account to start the business. So you as the bookkeeper of that company, what is your source document in, um, because you need to start capturing this transaction on the system, on, on maybe, maybe they've got an accounting um, system. So you need to start recording this transaction. Um, on the system, on the accounting system. So the first transaction, my question is, I'm going to ask, pick anyone um, to just answer me, to say that what what do you think will be the source document of you re recording this transaction? So I'm going to pick just one of you and just guess, even if you don't know, just uh, uh, tell me what source document will you be using uh, to record um, this transaction? So can, I'm, I'm going to ask um, Celine Dile. Celine Dile, just comment on the chat here. What do you think will be the source document for, for this transaction? So basically, you are the bookkeeper of this company, this new, the BS Electrical. This is the transaction that are happening in January. So basically, you need to record the first transaction. So my question is, what is the source document? Remember in, in, in accounting, the first thing before you do anything, you need to receive a source document. So that source document will be able, will, will help you. So Celine Dile, we were looking at the source document. So basically, Homozo, Homozo is asking, can we have a page number? Homozo, we're not looking at a specific study unit, but normally is between one, two, three, whereby we're covering the basics. So this is an exercise that I did. So it's not a, a specific exercise from the study unit. So basically today, I just want guys for you to understand the principle to understand your debits credits source documents so basically homozo it, it, it's sort of like an overview of one two three study units so this exercise is not from a specific uh learning unit so this is the exercise that i made for you for this class so that you can understand the basic uh principles so basically Celine the question I was asking is, what source document do you think you... So I'm going to just repeat the questions, the, the question that I, I asked uh, Celine Dile. So on this exercise, this exercise is a, uh, you as, as a student are in a position as a bookkeeper for BS Electrical. So Mr. 
Bongi Lesitole, a qualified electrician. So this is this I'm reading from transaction one. So Mr. Bongi Lesitole, a qualified electrician, started a small service business. BS Electrical. So basically, you are the bookkeeper of BS Electrical. So basically, I've asked Celine Dile, what is the source document? What source document will you be using to record this transaction? So he decided to deposit 40,000 in the entity's bank account to start the business. So the question that I had was, what source document will you as a bookkeeper of BS Electrical you will be using to record um, uh, to record the, the, the transaction. So remember, remember now guys, what are source documents? Remember, source documents are your invoices, your creditors invoices, your bank statement, your um, uh, so invoices from supplier, your bank statement. Uh, so, so those are source documents so so those are source documents that you will be using uh, to record so basically before you can even record that transaction you need to be able to understand what source document are you using so Celine Dile, you i can see that you're saying um uh, CPJ. No, that is a subsidiary journal. That's not a source document. Your source documents will be an invoice, will be your bank statement. So, so those are the documents that you're going to be using to record that transaction. So your, 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 your hint should be when you look at that transaction that I'm talking about, Deposit. He decided to deposit forty thousand in the entity's bank account. So basically, the source document will be what the bank statement. So on a, on a monthly pay basis, you as a bookkeeper, you need to do a bank reconciliation. So when you do a bank reconciliation, what do you have, you need? You need a bank statement. So that bank reconciliation, you need to do it what on a monthly basis. So basically, you, the source document for transaction one would be what? The bank statement. You'll be looking at money coming in uh, um, uh, the bank statement. So you'll be looking at the 40,000 coming into the bank account with, uh, 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 with uh, Mr. Bonile writing there as capital. So basically, this is the capital that um, he's deposited in the business. So basically, the source document, so this, the source document for transaction one will be the bank statement. Why am I saying the bank statement? I'm saying the bank statement because um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Sitole has what? He has deposited uh, 40,000 in the entity's bank account to start his business. So basically you will be holding what? You'll be holding a bank statement as your source document. So the bank statement will be your source document for transaction number one. Do you understand guys? Your bank statement will be a source document. And then I see Noren, is it not a receipt? And then entered uh, into account for bank and capital. It is the bank statement. You will have a bank statement or maybe uh, also after he has deposited, um, after he has deposited maybe that amount that maybe deposit slip or maybe his transfer that he transferred that money maybe from you know so that deposit uh, slip from the bank that also is a source document that deposit slip from the bank uh, uh, saying that he's deposited uh, forty thousand into his business uh, it will be a bank statement because the business has not traced and that's received the it will be a bank statement because um, because the business has not 
traded. Yes, yes, and that's received a cap. Yes, yes, this is capital contribution from the owner of the business. So transaction one, guys, do we understand that? What is our source document? So basically what I want you to, to just uh, put in your mind, the exercises that you'll be doing on the learning unit, make sure that when you look at the transaction, try and understand what is I. So try and put yourself as a bookkeeper of that company. Put yourself as a bookkeeper or accountant of that company saying, oh, I'm looking at the transactions. What is what is the transaction for? Because can you see that this transaction is also uh, telling you that he decided to deposit 40,000 in the entity's bank account to start a business. You know, so it's also explaining to you that what what is that transaction for? What is that transaction for? So we sorted, guys, We, we uh, uh, the source document for transaction one is the bank statement. So let's move on to transaction number two. Transaction number two is on the 15th of January 2021, BS Electrical bought toolbox and tools to be used by uh, Mr. B. Sutole on credit from big builders for 7,000. So for transaction two, please, um, I'm gonna pick anyone, just guess what will be the source document for this transaction? What will you be using to record in your books this transaction? So I'm gonna just pick anyone randomly, guys, just guess, um, guess what you think um, uh, the answer will be. Um, just write on the chat. Um, I'm gonna select Francis. Francis, um, uh, Francis, please just oh write on the chat. Okay, so I can see that Francis is not responding. Uh, so guys, sorry, ma uh, sorry, ma'am, I'm being interrupted by this uh, Manguaba. I think the source document will be a receipt. Thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you for that answer. So Francis is saying, guys, the source document for transaction number two is a is a what? It's a receipt. Do you guys just comment on the chat? Do you agree with with Francis? Do you agree with Francis that um, for transaction number two, the source document will be a receipt? So basically, I'm gonna read read that transaction again on the fifteenth of January, twenty twenty one. BS Electrical, BS um, Electrical bought a toolbox and tools to be used by uh, B. Sutole on credit from big builders for 7,000. Do you agree with um, uh, Francis that the source document um, uh, that will be used there um, is a receipt? Do you agree, guys? Do you agree with that? Do you agree that the source document there, um, the source document, so so basically he bought, so, uh, uh, so M. Koza agrees that it will be a receipt and Anele is saying lease and con context. Anela, you are, you are at the right track. So Anela Chiliza is saying, could it be a lease or, or, or context and invoice? So basically now, guys, I want you to understand that transaction. What is it? Is that transaction telling us? So basically it's saying, uh, Mr. Uh, B. Sitole, who is the owner of the business, bought toolbox and tools on credit from big builders. So basically, for example, it's you, uh, let's say, for example, Francis, you go to Edgar's uh, and take um, an account with, with Edgar's, you bought clothes on credit. So basically, he bought two box um, uh, on credit, uh, uh, um, uh, on credit from big builders. So he bought a uh, toolbox on credit from big builders. Uh, Noren, Noren said, I think it's rather an, an invoice. 
and it's an invoice and analyze an invoice because the goods were purchased on credit. Um, no, I don't agree. He will receive an invoice because he did not buy in cash. So he'll still be owing them. So guys, the source documents for transaction number two is a credit agreement. So there must be a credit agreement that he signed with big builders. So basically, he, this was bought on credit. So basically, he bought this, but he's still owing it. There must be an agreement that he entered it uh, with, with big builders. What do you think? There must be an agreement. So basically, you'll be looking at an agreement that was entered with between big builders and BS Electrical. So this is not something that he bought in cash or EFT. It's something that he bought on credit. So the agreement would be, for example, there'll be a debit order on a monthly basis, maybe that will go off. Uh, uh, maybe we don't know if the agreement was for three years that he'll be paying, what, 700 or maybe uh, 800 for that toolbox. So basically, this is something, an agreement that he entered with. Um, uh, Yes, yes, Nomzamo. So the source document for everything bought on credit um, is, an, uh, uh, is an agreement. Not everything, because not everything will be an agreement, because I can buy something now by credit card. So when I buy something by credit card, yes, it's on credit, but um, can, you see, can you see that the bank statement of that credit card, I will be recording with that. So let's say now, um, uh, you bought something else by credit card. So you, on a monthly basis, will be getting a statement on your credit card. Uh, yes, yes, Noreen. So things bought on account, yes. This is bought on account, yes, Noreen, yes. So basically, there is it's not a once-off purchase. This is something that they bought on account, so there must be an agreement that was signed to say, I will pay it in three years, and this will be a debit order of 800 rand going off the bank account. So basically, they will definitely in this, I'm going to say that he did, it will be a debit order that will go off maybe on a monthly basis. But now for you to initially record this, this should be on a, um, uh, you're going to be using the, um the agreement so the agreement you'll be using the agreement as the initial source document for this transaction so transaction number two the initial um the initial um record uh, source document for this transaction is a agreement from big builders but on a second month, which is Feb, will be the bank statement. So the next month will be the bank statement because now you entered into a three-year uh, agreement to pay this amount in three years. Let's say, for example, you'll be you'll be paying um, yes. So let's say now you'll be paying eight hundred, or we don't know what what the agreement was. Yes, does this apply to? Um, does this apply to a lease agreement? So, so basically, also with a lease agreement, it, yes, it also it is is an agreement that you're entering into. It it also does agree with the lease with the lease agreement. But in the lease agreement, it's sort of like this is rental. So 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 basically, with every agreement whereby there is no money being paid upfront. There is, should be an agreement. Do you agree with me, guys, that if you're not paying something upfront in cash, there should be, you. so you will be paying something on account. So meaning you will be paying uh, uh, um, whatever you bought on credit on a monthly basis. So transaction number two will be an agreement that uh, will be your source document. So I'm going to move to transaction number three. Transaction number three, on the 18th of January 2021, BS um, Electrical bought a letter uh, from letters and paid it, paid for it by EFT 
1,200. So for transaction number three, I just want to know what will be your source document for transaction number three. And I'm going to just pick any one randomly. I'm going to pick Noren. Noren, please write on the chat, what do you think transaction number three? What is the source document for transaction number three? Noren, please. Just uh, uh, write your answer. So Noren is saying an invoice. An invoice will be the source document for transaction number three. Uh, so guys, please comment. Do you agree with Noreen on that? So on the 18th of January, BS Electrical bought a letter, bought a letter from a uh, bought, um, bought a letter from letters and paid it by EFT. 1,200 paid it by EFT. So Noren is saying an invoice, is saying an invoice, and Noren is saying proof of payment as is paid by EFT. Cash, uh, I can see that. Proof of payment or bank statement. Guys, I know, man, I'm so impressed. I am so impressed. I am very impressed with your answers. Very, very impressed. Very, very impressed. Okay, guys, uh, let's go back. Uh, Noren, um, Mohadi, I do agree. Um, proof of payment, bank statement, yes. Yes, Noren, um, Yes, Nomzamo, yes, bank statement, yes, because it includes, yes, guys, um, I'm so impressed. So basically, this uh, source document will be an invoice from, an invoice from um, uh, letters, PTY, LTD, and a bank statement. That will be the source document for this transaction. So for transaction number four, guys, what is the source document? On the 25th of January 2021, BS Electrical paid salary to M. Macau, junior electrician, by EFT 4000 rand. What is the source document for transaction number four? I'm going to just choose randomly um, one person to just answer that uh, question. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Mohadi. Mohadi, please just comment on the chat. What do you think will be the source document for that? What do you think will be the source document for transaction number four? So transaction number four is saying on the 25th of January 2021, BS Electrical paid salary to M. Mogao, um, M. Mogao, junior electri electrician. Uh, oh, guys, I'm so impressed. Eh? <laughs> well done. <laughs> I am so impressed. I am very very impressed. I am very, very impressed, guys. So very impressed. Mohali, well done. Selina, Anele, Noren. Noren, guys, well done. Hey, eh? you are basically listening. Well done on the say. Eh? So basically, now what I want you to grasp is when you are a bookkeeper of a company. You, for your recording in the accounting system, you need to have a source document. That source document will determine where you'll be recording those transactions. That source document will be able to, 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 you will be able to determine um, where you'll be recording those transactions. So the next step that I want us to do is when you see, when you see this um, uh, uh, transaction, you're holding, um, uh, uh, you have the source document. The question is, how do you apply the double entry principle looking at uh, the transaction and the source document? So basically, in a practical scenario, you won't have this transaction. The only thing you'll be having is what? Is the source document. So in a practical scenario, you are an accountant, a bookkeeper for BS Electrical, 
electrical. You won't be reading a transaction. You'll be holding a source document. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? You won't be. So uh, uh, for the purpose of this course, of the classes, they are writing the transactions so that you'll be able, please, please um, uh, 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 mute yourself. Uh, they're writing the transactions so that you can determine the source document. So in the practical scenario, you won't be reading a transaction. You'll be holding a source document for you to do the recording. So at the present moment, I want us, when you have a source document, how do you apply uh, the double entry principle uh, with you? Uh, uh, so, so I want us now to apply the, 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 the double entry uh, principle using this four transactions. So now what I want us to do, I want us to apply the double entry principle. So this is how I want us to apply it. When analyzing a transaction, always ask the four questions. Which two accounts are involved in the transaction? Do the accounts form part of asset equity liability? Did the asset equity liability increase or decrease? Which one of the accounts must be debited and which one of the account must be credited in the general ledger? So basically, this is what I want us to apply on those four transactions that we just did. I want us to apply the double entry principle on the um, uh, four transactions that we just did. I want us to apply the double um, uh, the double entry, um, the double entry uh, principle on the four transaction. So I'm going to read the first transaction to, to you guys. Remember, the first transaction is uh, Mr. B.C. Tolle, a qualified electrician, started a small business, BS, electric, uh, BS Electrical. BS Electrical, and he decided to deposit. I'm going to read it again, guys, before you answer. Mr. B.C. Tolle, a qualified electrician, electrician, started a small business, BS Electrical, on the 1st of January. He decided to deposit 40000 in the entity's bank account to start a business. So first of all, the question, the question that I'm having in, in this, which two accounts are involved in this transaction? Which two accounts? Uh, I can see. I can see answers. I can see people are answering. Which two accounts? Um, I see. I see. Selena. Um, Selena is saying capital account will will credit by forty thousand, and then non client is saying bank and capital. Uh, guys, please comment. Do you agree with um, Selena and Nontanta? So basically now we, I'm asking the first one, which two accounts are, are involved in the transaction? Which two accounts are involved in, in the transaction? Yo, yo, guys, I'm so impressed. <laughs> I am so impressed, eh? I am very impressed. I am very, very impressed. I am very impressed. The two accounts, which which two I am very impressed. I am very impressed. Nuren, Nuren is saying bank and capital. Selena is also saying, guys, bank and I'm so impressed. I am so impressed. Definitely, guys, this is bank and capital. Definitely. Well done on that day. Eh? Everybody's saying the same thing, and I'm I, I'm just hoping that everybody understand why it's, it's um, bank and capital. Well done on that. Well done, guys. The next one will be, do the accounts form part of asset equity liabilities? 
that is the, 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 the second question in applying the double entry principle. Do the accounts form part of assets, equity, liabilities? So Noreen is saying assets, what is, what is asset? What is equity? You're saying asset and equity. Which account is asset? Which account is equity? Um, hey, Lati Brain is saying bank is asset and um, capital is equity. And um, M. Koza uh, is saying they form part of asset, uh, capital, equity, bank, asset, non tantra. Nom Zama is saying equity. Uh, Noren, bank asset, yes, Noren, yeah, be specific. Noren is saying bank asset and capital is equity. Nom Zamu, bank would be an asset, I think. Um, uh, and then M. Koza is saying bank is an asset. Um, um, and then Spindile is saying, yes, they form part of assets. Uh, Spindile is saying they form part of assets and equity. The bank account is an asset and equity is capital. Bank asset and capital is equal. Well done, guys. Well done on this. Yes, a bank is an asset and capital is from part, part of equity. That is correct. That is correct. And we're going to be look at, uh, looking at the third. Um, what is the third one? Did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? Did the asset, equity, liability, uh, let us see. Uh, Noreen is saying, um, asset increase, equity decrease. Guys, do you agree with Noreen? And then Hayla De Brain is saying, both asset and equity increased. Hmm. Yes, they increased. Asset increased, equity also increased. Asset increased, equity non tanta and um, M Cosa plus asset plus equity. Well done on it, hey? Well done. Noren, they will both increase. Remember, asset, asset increase on a debit side and decrease on the credit side. Capital is an equity, and when equity increase, you credit. When equity decrease, you debit. So in this case, they both increasing. Why am I saying they're both increasing? Bank is increasing because money and asset increase on a debit side. So meaning money is coming into the bank account. So that means that the asset is increasing. There is money coming into the bank account. So capital is an equity. So by putting money into your equity, you're increasing your equity. That's why the equity also is also increasing. So remember with equity, I need you to remember this. Equity is increased by income and decreased by expenses. I'm going to repeat that again. Always remember that, especially when you do your accounting equation. When there's an expense, expense decreases your equity and your income increases your equity. This is, is so important to note when you're doing your accounting equation. When you do your accounting equation, Always remember that when there's an expense, when the business is paying an expense, that expense is decreasing equity. And when there's an income coming into the business, where there is income being generated into the business, that income increases your equity. Always, I want you to note that and remember that for your accounting equation. Please, if you've got a pen in your where you are, you're sitting, write that one down. That is so important. Accounting equation, when you have an expense and you're doing an accounting 
um, uh, when you're doing an accounting equation. Guys, I'm going to repeat this. Write it down some way. When you do an accounting equation, you're paying an expense. An expense will always, always decrease your equity. And when you have money coming into the business whereby um, uh, income is being generated, services being rendered, income is coming into the business, that will always, always increase your equity. So that put note regarding that when we, we're going to be doing the accounting equation, please make a note of that. Make a big note on of that and write it down somewhere. So guys, I am um, we, we did the third one. Let's see. The third one was uh the did the asset equity and liability increase or decrease? They both increased. So the last one is which one of the accounts must be debited and which one of account must be credited in the general ledger. I'm 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 saying that purposely. Which one account must be debited? Which one account must be credited in the general ledger? And I'm also going to be saying, and the trial balance. I'm going to repeat that again. The, the number four is which account must be debited? Which account must be credited in the general ledger and the trial and the trial balance and the trial balance? and the trial balance. So Hela De Bruyne is saying bank will be debited and capital will be credited. OK, Noreen um, is saying bank debited, capital credited. And then Nontland is saying bank debited and capital credited. And um, uh, uh, Spindile is saying bank debited, capital credited. Guys, well done on that. So basically, um, we are basically saying this, uh, we're going to be debiting uh, the general ledger. We're going to be debiting a uh, bank account with uh, 40,000 in the general ledger. And also when we do the trial balance, we're going to be debiting the trial balance with uh, uh, 40,000. I'm also saying on transaction four, we're going to be crediting uh, capital with 40,000 in the general ledger and also debiting, crediting capital again uh, in the trial balance. Make sure you, you, you're, listening, you're listening attentively here. So the transaction number four, what I'm, I'm telling you in number four uh, is we're going to be debiting bank with 40,000 in the general ledger and trial balance. We're going to be crediting capital account with 40,000 in the general ledger and trial balance. Yes, Angela, Vanessa, yes, guys. Well done, guys. Well done on this. Well done. You just now applied the double entry um, principle. You just applied the double entry principle on this four transactions. You just applied the double entry uh, 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 system on the four, uh, 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 four transactions. And regarding the double entry principle, guys, ne? I, I need if anybody, please, please, at the moment before I move on, I need you to say um, any problems you're having now uh, on the chat with that. that. So what we just did so far, I need you to ask questions if somebody's struggling with what we just did now. I need somebody now to just comment now on the chat to say, this is, yes, we've done um, the source document, we've done the uh, double entry principle, but I still don't understand one, two, three. At this point, I need somebody to just raise their hand or just write on the chat to say, I, I don't understand. There's something that you don't understand with what we just did now. And if you say, if you understand, just comment on the chat saying, 
at so far I, I understand what you just did uh, and then lena lena why is the bank account being debited so lena um i'm gonna explain to you so the bank account is an asset so when an asset increase you debit and when an asset decrease you credit so uh so lena um so so lena i want to explain it uh, uh, to you is bank account is an asset and when an asset increase you debit that's why we are debiting the bank account we are debiting the bank account because when uh, 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 asset increase you debit that account when asset increase you debit that account When asset increase, you debit account. Please comment, Lina. This is, uh, I just explained, just come. Okay, yeah. So asset uh, increase on the debit side. Asset decrease on the credit side. So because an asset, because bank is an asset, we're debiting it when it increases on the debit side. Okay, let's look at Refilwe. Refilwe, please clarify on the trial balance. So, guys, the trial balance, I will clarify it. I just want you, before I clarify the trial balance, um, yes, I see Kitumets also. I'm a bit lost on the trial balance part. You mentioned trial balance, unless, yes, I did mention the trial balance, Kitumets. Refilwe, yes, also wants clarity regarding the trial balance. Guys, Regarding that trial balance, I'm going to share something with you now. Let me just tell me when you see it. I'm going to explain that part of the trial balance to you guys. And thank you for raising that one, the, the, to raising um, uh, the, the confusion regarding the trial balance. Guys, I just shared a trial balance. Can you see it? So, those who need clarity regarding regarding the trial balance, this is what I'm talking about. So remember when I said in point number four to say, you, which account do you debit? Which account do you credit in the general ledger and the trial balance? This is what I'm talking about. To say that, can you see that capital? This is what I was talking about. I'm crediting way in the trial balance. So basically, uh, Refilo is saying, please clarify the trial balance. So remember, before you get to the trial balance, you must have done a general ledger. So the first step, remember the accounting cycle is source document. After source document is the what? Is the subsidiary journal. After the subsidiary journals comes the general ledger. After the general ledger comes the trial balance. So, uh, 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 Refilo, do you understand where the, the trial balance and Kitumets, where the trial balance come from? So basically, in the so going back to the transaction. So basically, this is the trial the the, the 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 trial balance. But if we did the full the full accounting cycle, you would have seen we've done the source document. We've, we've, the next step would be doing what? Subsidiary journals. So on the full transaction that we did now, you would we would have selected in which subsidiary journal this would have gone to. And then the next step will be the general ledger, recording this in the general ledger. Then the next step will be the trial balance. So the trial balance will come after the general ledger. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying at the present moment. So on the accounting cycle, first comes the source document. After the source document is the recording in the subsidiary journals. So in this exercise, we didn't record, but normally you would record this in the subsidiary journal. Number three, after doing the subsidiary journal, you would record this in the general ledger. So in the general ledger, what do you do? You, 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 you will have an account called capital and on the capital account, you will be crediting uh, that capital account with 40,000. 
And on the general ledger, we will have an account called bank. On the bank account, you will be debiting the bank account with 40,000. And after finalizing the general ledger, you will take the balance way to the trial balance. I hope, I don't know if you understand what I just explained now. Please guys comment on the chat. So on the accounting cycle, so the accounting cycle, they talk about how you will be recording all of the transactions. The first step is the source document is what we did. We identified um, the source document. Number two, is the subsidiary journal. So basically the subsidiary journals is the journals that you will be using. What are the subsidiary journals? Is the cash book uh, payment, cash book receipt. Um, uh, will be, you, you get what I'm saying, the trust journals, uh, the, the, the trust receipts, trust payments, that those are called subsidiary journals. So you will be recording those on your subsidiary journals. What are the ex example of subsidiary journals? Uh, 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 cash book payment, cash book receipt, uh, general journal, um, uh, your your trust receipts, trust receipts payment. That is an example of your uh, uh, subsidiary journals. Then the next step, you will do your general ledger. What is a general ledger? General ledger is where you sum up all your individual accounts you sum up all your individual accounts. So basically now capital account for the month of January, the only balance that happened is that contribution of 40,000. So in your general ledger, you will have an account called capital and you will credit that account because it's equity. The next one will be bank. Bank will be what? Will be debited with 40,000. And then any other transactions that affect the bank will go uh, to the bank. So basically, look at those balances that I have on the on the trial balance. Can you see that capital I've credited? So I'm saying also in the general ledger, this uh, balance was was accredited. Look at bank. Bank is saying on the bank account there was a debit of forty thousand that was debited. There was a credit of, we bought 1,200 of the letters and then we paid salary of 4,000 4, rent. For, and then the, the, when you, 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 so, so, so later on, I'm gonna be doing, uh, uh, how do you do the general ledger? How do you balance off? How do you balance uh, uh, the general ledger? So remember what I said now, I said to you, today we're doing an overview of everything, but not in detail, but I just want you to see the bigger picture, the bigger picture of what is happening. So basically uh, uh, what I'm doing now with the subsidiary journals, we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be doing that recording in the subsidiary journal. The general ledger, we're gonna be doing it in detail. So basically, what are you seeing now is just a summary of an overview of what's really happening um, when you do the accounts um, of a company. Can, can, can you see that, guys? So when you look at that trial balance, you can see that a uh, uh, what I'm saying to you now is the bank account. So basically the balance that you see in the trial balance will be in the will be the same balance you see in the general ledger. But remember, before you get to the trial balance, what do you do? You do the general ledger first. So if the general, so I'm gonna say, for example, if the general ledger, the bank, the capital account in the general ledger has a credit balance of 40,000. That same balance you will take to the trial balance as a credit of 40,000. That's why I was busy repeating that point number four when when it says, when we do with it, we did the accounting, the double entry principle. When I said in number four, which account do you debit? Which account do you credit in the general ledger and the trial balance? I was just wanting you uh, explaining this to say that that balance of capital account in your general ledger that is credited 40,000 in the general ledger will also be credited in the trial balance. That, that, that is the principle 
uh, that I wanted to explain to you to say that whatever the balance is in, in whatever side, debit or credit is in the general ledger, you're going to be taking the same thing, the, the, the same side of it to the trial balance. So if the balance capital is credited on the general ledger, when you take it to the trial balance, it's also going to be credited. When a balance um, uh, of salaries in the general ledger is debited with 4,000, when you take it to the trial balance, it's also going to be debited with with um, uh, 4,000 rand. So whatever you gonna, whatever side that entry is in the general ledger, you will still you'll take it to the trial balance in that same side. So basically, I'm I'm saying you can't have a balance in the general ledger, uh, capital account credit forty thousand in the general ledger as credited forty thousand, and when you take it to trial balance, is debited. You can't do that. You 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 cannot do that. So I'm um, basically the overview is the accounting system is saying start with the source document then process this to the subsidiary journals. The subsidiary journals, for example, would be cash book receipts, cash book payment, general journal, um, your, your trust receipts, trust payments. And then the third step will be record that in your general ledger. After recording that in your general ledger, you take it to your trial balance. So the question that I'm asking is, in a, a, a company, after the trial balance, what else are you? What what are what comes after the trial balance? Just uh, anybody, just case. After recording through the trial balance, what is the next step? Is the books done? Is the is is regarding reporting for a company? Is this done after the the the, the trial balance? Can you just comment on the on the uh, on the chat? Just guess, um, after the trial balance, is everything done regarding the reporting of the company? Are you are you done? Is there another um, report that needs to be done? Uh, Noreen is saying no. Um, Selena is saying the income statement. You're very close. You're very close, Selena. Very, very close. You're just saying a, a, just a part, but you're not saying everything there when you just say the income statement. So you're not uh, saying everything. You're just saying just a portion, but you're not telling everybody. Yes, hey, lady brain, correct. Correct. M Cosa, correct. Yes. Correct. Yes, yes, Pindile. Yes, the next step would be your financial statements. That will be your financial statements. That will be the next step. So can you see an example of financial statements? The financial statements are the last step as the show um company's financial cycle it means yes yes you pr so basically the financial statements will show um the the company's performance and company's position so 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 the income statement will show the company's performance for the uh, accounting period and then the the, the the balance sheet will show the financial position for the financial period. So financials, so financial statements is it's it's normally those that are audited by auditors. So the auditors will be auditing the financial statements. So if a, a company is saying for the last 12 months, we've been paying rent to 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 PEM Goldings of uh, 10,000 per month for the last 12 months. The auditors needs to verify if those to, that is true. So the auditors will be verifying those balances as at year end. So, for example, if um, uh, the company that we did, BS Electrical, 
has a financial year of December. So the 12th month uh, financial period is 31st December. When auditors, auditors will be auditing transactions from Jan 2021 to December uh, 2021. So the financial statement will be saying annual financial statement as at 31st December 2021. So the auditors will be auditing that uh, uh, um, financials and giving them an opinion to say that we verify the, uh, the balances and we agree with uh, 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 the balances that were recorded. So the auditor's main objective is to confirm if the balances on the financial statement are correct. So basically, this is um, uh, um, after the trial balance, this is the next step of reporting um, uh, for a company. So, 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 so now, you know what I want us to do? I want us to do the accounting equation on those four transactions. I want us to do the accounting equation um, on the four um, uh, transactions. I want us to do the accounting equation. So guys, remember what is the accounting equation? Accounting equation is assets equals to equity plus liabilities. And then or equity equals to assets minus liabilities. Um, I see a comment here. Noreen, this is where I am stuck now. OK, so the accounting equation, let me just share that. I want us to go through this uh, accounting equation together. Let me share this. And I want you to fully understand. So the accounting equation, guys, is the accounting equation you are working on asset. This is the equation. Asset equals to equity plus liabilities. Or you, or you can say equity equals to asset minus liability. So the equity equals all the assets in the entity less all claims against those assets. So we're going to be looking at transaction number one now. We're going to be doing it together. We're going to be doing it together. So remember transaction number one. Let's look at transaction number one. B, um, B uh, Bengali Sitol, a qualified electrician, started a small service business, BS Electrical, on the 1st of January. He decided to deposit 40000 in an entity's bank account to start a business. So this is what the two accounts you've you've done um, uh, 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 the double entry principle. So at the moment, let's apply that. Asset, a uh, bank is an asset. So asset is what asset is increasing. You plus bank forty thousand, and what is uh, capital? Capital is equity. Equity is what equity is increasing. So you wanna plus. Because it's increasing, it's a, it's a, it's plus uh, uh, capital forty thousand. Any question on the first one? On the first uh, 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 entry we done on the accounting equation. Just uh, make a comment on the um, um, chats. The first one, guys. Can you see plus plus 40,000 because asset, a, a bank is an asset and asset is what? Asset is increasing. So for me, I feel if, oh, you can't see, so not like you, so you can't see what I shared now. Guys, can you see what I just shared um, um, the accounting equation? And non-clanta saying you can't see the the 
accounting equation exercise that I just shared now. So I want us guys, I'm going to explain it again. I'm going to explain it again. I want us to go through this, the, this, this exercise again. So we still doing the same exercise that we started where we looked at the source document, we looked at the double entry principle. Now we're doing the same exercise now, but now we're doing the accounting equation. Basically, I'm going to go through this again, guys. So transaction number one, remember on transaction number one, um, B, Yes, yes, no, I get it, guys. So I'm just going to focus it on it and then look at the the, the messages um, uh, later. Uh, Ms. Debbie Mullis told a qualified electrician started a small service business, BS Electrical, on the 1st of Jan. He decided to deposit. So remember, guys, this is the same exercise we started with. This is no different. The same exercise. So the accounting equation is saying asset equals to equity plus liability or you can say equity equals to asset minus liabilities so in this one i used assets equals to um equity plus liabilities so i the one thing i want you to pick up when you do the accounting equation is can you see assets is 40000 minus uh, equity plus liability. So basically, they need to be equal. So basically, asset plus 40 equals to equity plus zero. Can you see that liability? There is nothing. So you need to add in the, that nothing plus zero. So uh, when you do this equation, it must always equal 40,000. Basically, I'm saying 40,000 equals to 40,000. They both equal. I need you to, to, to understand this equation. Asset equals to equity plus liabilities. So in this question is bank plus 40,000 equals to capital plus 40,000. That is the accounting equation. Why am I saying plus bank 40,000? Money came into the business's bank account. So meaning the bank account as an asset is increasing. And when an asset increase, what do you do? You debit. You debit the, 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 the bank account or the asset in the general ledger and the trial balance. So in this case, uh, the other one is equity. Why is equity increasing? Equity is increasing because you've added a contribution. The owner has contributed 40,000 into the business. That's why now uh, we, uh, uh, it's a plus, plus uh, uh, 40,000. That is the first transaction. So we're going to be looking at the second transaction. The second transaction is on the 15th of January 2021, BS Electrical Board Toolbox. Uh, toolbox and tools to be used by BC Tolle on credit from big builders. The question is, what is the toolbox? So those toolbox are what? Those toolbox are assets. So these are assets that he's going to be using to generate income for his electrical business. So he bought an asset for what? For 7,000 rand. He bought an asset um, for 7,000 rand, which is a tool, tools and equipment. And he bought that what? On credit. That was bought on credit. So basically, we are adding assets into the business. So the business is having, by buying an asset, you're increasing assets into the business. So you're going to debit asset plus uh, uh, 7,000. And also, our liabilities are increasing. There is more. So we have increased our liability to 7,000 rand. So can you see that there's a plus because assets are increasing 7,000 and then you say equals to equity plus liability. There's a plus on liability creditor big, 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 
big builders for 7,000. Can you see that the equation balances? The equation balances also on the second transaction because we've gained, we, we, we've bought an asset, uh, tool, tools and equipment that will that is increasing. When an asset increases, you debit. We've also uh, um, uh, 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 have a liability uh, uh, from big builders for 7,000. So basically our liabilities has also increased for the business. So BS Electrical has more, uh, has uh, gained an asset, tools and equipment, and has also got a new uh, liability from big builders for 7,000. So I'm going to look at the third one. The third one is on the 18th of January 2021, BS Electrical bought letter from letters and paid it by EFT for 1,200. So both are assets. Can you see that? Bank, it's a minus 1,200. Why is bank a minus? Because bank is decreasing. And when an asset bank decrease you, credit. So it's a minus. And then when you look at uh, tools, uh, uh, um, they bought a ladder. So guys, mind you, this should have been ladder but it's also part of tools and equipment. So tools and equipment, again, is part of the asset. It's what is increasing. So they've gained a ladder, which will form part of tools and equipment for 1,200. So can you see minus and a plus is what the effect is zero. Equals to equity plus liability, both on the other side is zero. Can you see that that transaction, that equation also balances? It balances. So minus 1,200 plus the 1,200, the effect is zero. And then when you look, equals to zero because equity, there's nothing. Liability, there's nothing. Let's go to transaction number four. Transaction number four is saying, um, um, uh, on the 25th of uh, um, January 2021, electrical, um, pay, uh, BS Electrical paid salary to Emma Kwai Jr. Um, by EFT uh, 4000. Guys, look at transaction number four, accounting equation. And remember what I told you earlier on. Do you agree with this transaction? Look at it and tell me if you agree or not. With what has been saying with the three that it balances do you agree with it, guys? Look at it and remember what earlier what I said to you. Look at it and tell me if you agree with it. And um, remember, remember what I said initially. Remember what I said to you. What did I say to you? I don't. I, I want to check who was listening to me when I said when we do accounting equation later. Make note of this. Make note of this. I want somebody to just say, tell me what they say, what I said. Tell me what I said. Yeah, I want to see who's listening. Who is listening? Uh, no, no, I, tools, no, it doesn't balance. No, no, salary is a liability. You said equity increased by income and decreased. Yes, Kitu it definitely you are listening. No, because doesn't, yes, doesn't balance Selena. Equity is income and the, uh, there has not been income. The equity must be decreased because expense is paid. Well done, Kitu Equity decreases, no rain, well done. Uh, refillway, expense, yes, refillway, well done. Paying salaries a liability. Selena, uh, um, salaries is an expense of a company. Salaries is not a liability. Salary is an expense. Yes, guys. Um, Malawudi Ashley, expense decrease. Yes. Uh, equity decreases. Yes, guys. Salary is not an honest equity, it is a liability. Salary is an expense of the company. 
salary is an expense of the company. Yes, Anele. Guys, you are listening. Well done. Eh? Expense, yes. So, guys, what should be this uh, transaction number four? As we all clearly agree that this has this is an incorrect um uh, this is incorrect to balance that uh, that equation what must happen to balance that equation to make it correct because we agree that this is totally totally incorrect how do we how do we make it correct this transaction number four is incorrect what should be the correct um, transaction? And I see, I see the answers there. Um, Angela, equity decreased uh, by expenses and increase. Okay, and then Noreen is saying bank and equity decreases. Do you agree with Noreen, guys? Bank and equity decreases. Okay, Tabiso agrees. But uh, guys, do you understand what, what I just told you earlier on when I said always, always when you do your accounting equation, expenses will always decrease equity and income will always um, uh, increase your equity. I'm going to now add Transaction number five. So basically, this should be minus here, yeah. minus. Can you see now that the transaction now balances? Transaction balances bank is an asset because money is going out of BS electrical bank account. Your bank account is what now? Your bank account is decreasing and the bank account is an asset. And when an asset decreases, you credit the asset. And in this case, salaries is an expense. An expense will always decrease your equity. That's why um, there's a minus 4,000. So the equation balances as asset minus 4,000 and then equals to minus 4,000. So I'm going to do uh, add a transaction. Um, additional transaction here on the 26th January 2021 BS electrical that a service M and paid seven thousand five hundred for the electrical repairs. So I just added and um additional transaction here guys can you see that transaction i just added now yes we can see matilda thank you so this transaction ne, look at this transaction the first thing i want to ask about this transaction is what is the source document what is the source document for this transaction Matilda, I see some comments. They say cash receipt, proof of payment. Yeah, yes. proof of payment. Proof of payment. Guys, 
um, uh, cash receipts, I see bank statement, duplicate invoice. Yes, yes, I see cash receipts. Guys, duplicate invoice, yes. The most important thing is when you trading, when you have a business, remember when you render a service, you need to issue your client or your customer with what? A tax invoice. Remember, there should be you now going, um, uh, there's a service being rendered, um, maybe electrician comes to your home and comes and fix something in the house. What does he leave you with? A tax invoice. So basically, there should be an invoice that was issued. As you said, a duplicate invoice in that company saying, we've re um, uh, uh, there's a service that was rendered. We've given the customer. We've got a copy. There's a copy left with us um, in the office. So even if the electrician goes to your home, you get the original, but there should be a copy that they go with to the business for their recording purposes. So I do agree with the invoice. Yes, there should be an invoice and also bank statement, that money showing in the bank statement, that 7,500 showing on the bank statement. Definitely. Guys, you are, you are, you, you're on the ball, eh? I'm so impressed. You are on the ball. Hey, I can see bank statement. Yes, hey, let your brain duplicate invoice. Yes, I can see the invoice. So, the, I want us now on the same, same um, a transaction, I want us to apply um, the double entry principle. The first question is, what are the two accounts? So which two accounts are involved in the transaction? Which, okay, I see bank, I see bank and service rendered. Um, which two accounts are involved in the transaction? Which two accounts? So remember, uh, I see somebody saying assets and equity, um, assets, a bank and equity. Hmm, bank and equity. Which two accounts? So the two accounts, you agree with me, guys, involved, all of you are not wrong. Yes, uh, uh, it can be bank and... So, so the, main, the most important thing that you need to pick up, I'm so impressed, guys, you're picking up bank because this amount was paid by EFT, 100%. Number two, you need to have uh, recognized that there is income if the service rendered, there is income coming into the business. There is income coming into the business, guys. There is income. So basically, if even if you say service rendered or but income and bank. So service rendered is what is income money coming into the business. So it's income and bank. So do number two is, do the accounts form part of asset equity or liabilities? So the other number question, uh, I see asset and equity. Asset and equity, ah, well done. Well done guys, I'm impressed. I am impressed. I am impressed. Well done on that. Number three, did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? Both increase. Okay, I see the comment. Uh, both increase, I see. Why? Why are you saying both increase? Why? Why are you saying both increase? Why? 
Y. Why are you saying both increase? Why? Well done, guys. Well done. Well done. Well done, because uh, income increasing money. Yes, yes, money came into the business. Well done, guys. The fourth one is which one of the account must be debited and which one must be credited in the general ledger and the trial balance? We Point number four, which one of the accounts must be debited? Which one must be credited? Bank debit and income credit. Bank debit, uh, income credit. Bank debit, well, ooh, I'm so well done, guys. Well done. Well done. Bank debit. The next step on this, I want you to do the accounting equation. What will be the accounting equation of this transaction? What will be the, the accounting equation? Okay, plus 7,000 bank and equity. What is the accounting equation of this transaction? Plus bank, plus equity. Hmm. Plus bank plus equity. Plus bank plus equity. Uh, hey, let you brain plus bank, no rent plus bank. Non planta plus bank plus equity equals to zero. Guys, do you agree with no rent? Um, hey, lady, pray, non planta, Sachua, you do agree with what they're saying now with the accounting equation? Can you see what I, I say to you earlier on? Always, always, when you do your accounting equation, income will always increase equity, expense will always decrease your equity when you do your accounting equation. Look at why I'm saying that you look at the example for transaction four and transaction five. Look at transaction four in transaction five. Can you see in transaction four, salaries, it's an expense and it decreased equity. And then transaction five, service was rendered income um, increased um, uh, your equity. Can you see that in, 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 in both what I, I told you and now we applying it. Can you see that we applying it? I agree with them, Silindile. Yes, both Mulawudi agrees, Ashley tools. Bank plus seven thousand years. Um, Kitumezi. Yes, I agree with them. Non Tlantla. Yes, yes. Guys, can you see what I said about equity? So please comment if you if you somebody is struggling now with accounting equation. Comment on the chat if you you don't understand, guys. We can go through that again. Please, please, please um, uh, write on the chat if you still don't understand the accounting equation. Heila, you pray and understand. Thank you. Thank you, Heila. Thank you. After months, I'm finally getting it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's my pleasure, Noreen. M. Koza understood. That's great. I need because today nobody has to leave this class not understanding what we did. The overview that I just showed you from 
when I started through the source document to up to now. Everybody needs to have understood, and this is your time to just mention what you still stuck with, with what I've done now, um, uh, 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 what, what we've done this morning. And please, guys, please, please don't be shy if everybody understands and you still feel stuck that you don't understand, please. We, we, we all of us are here to learn and we all of us here to learn from each other. So nobody should be ashamed to say, ma'am, uh, Matilda, I still don't understand. It's, uh, you know, please, please let us know so that we can all work together in achieving a common goal of making sure that we understand and we make sure that we pass we pass um, FSC 1503 and also we're changing our mindset that we positive, we are positive. So guys, I'm gonna now run through what we've done today just to make Thara, if there's somebody else who still um, uh, didn't understand but doesn't wanna raise their hand up. So I'm gonna do just a quick overview of what we did um, this morning. So I'm going to just open, uh, I'm, I'm just going to be looking at the one that uh, I shared now. So first of all, uh, trans we did this transaction number one. What was the source document for transaction number one? So transaction number one, um, we said uh, the source document was what? Was the bank statement. The bank statement is the source document for this um, account. And we said when we applied the double entry rule on this transaction, we said um, on this 40,000. So number one, what is the source document for transaction number one? The source document for, for transaction number one is the bank statement. Why are we saying the bank statement? We're saying the bank statement because money came into the account and um, uh, that that reflected on the bank statement that it, that, um, that that reflected on on the on the bank statement um, uh, let me just see somebody saying is it possible to receive the slides so that we can do uh, the revision on this um, uh, is it possible? Yes, please share the slides. Okay. I'm going to share my email address, guys. Hey? I'm going to share my email address uh, to receive the slides so that we can do the revision on this. Okay. I'm going to share the, the my email address and then. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to share my email address. Um, I need you to forward me your email, and then I'll forward um, the slides, um, this slides to you. Um, so I'm just going over everything we just did. So the first transaction, what is the source document? Um, the source document is what? Is um, a bank statement, bank statement, and then what? What is the 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 the, the uh, applying the double entry rule on, on this transaction. So the double entry rule on this transaction is this is um, uh, asset, this is um, asset and equity, asset and um, this is bank and capital. Do the accounts form part of asset equity and liability? Yes, this is uh, asset bank increasing. This is capital equity increasing. Did the asset equity liability increase? Yes, they both increased. And which one of the accounts must be debited or credited um, in their general ledger and trial balance? So capital account will be credited with 40,000 and a bank will be debited with 40,000. Um, and also in the trial balance, um, the same will be applicable. The next transaction will be, um, let's see, what is the next uh, transaction? The next transaction, and then the same transaction when it comes to accounting equation, 
accounting equation, bank. So one thing that I want you to look at, ne? look at this, look at this accounting equation uh, for transaction number one. I, I just want you, there's a link. One thing that I want you to link up is look at the accounting equation for transaction number one. And also I'm going to share this. Just look at it. Look at accounting equation for transaction number one is plus bank 40,000 and plus capital 40,000. And after that, look at this. I want you to look at this. Uh, let me just share this. Uh, let's share this. Look, look at this um, point number three in the um, double entry principle. Did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? So I'm saying to you, if you understand this point number three in the double entry principle, that will be so you will be able to apply your accounting equation. I don't know, you, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying to you, when you look at uh, the, the applying the double entry principle, you're looking at did the asset equity liability increase or decrease? So in the first transaction, asset bank increase uh, by 40,000. What is equity? Equity is capital, capital increase by 40,000. So basically I'm saying that what you applying on number three, double entry principle, is the same principle you're applying on the accounting equation. It's the same principle you are applying it on the accounting equation. Transaction number two, um, uh, let's do, uh, let's see, transaction number two, uh, it says, um, let me just read that one out. On the 15th of January, BS Electrical bought toolbox and tools to be used by BC Tolle on credit. So this toolbox are assets that were bought on credit by 7,000. Let's look at the, the, the third, did the asset um, the, did the asset equity or liability increase or decrease? So on that second transaction, uh, asset toolbox increased by 7,000. Number two, um, um, liability increased uh, by 7,000. When you look at the accounting equation, when you look, let me share the accounting equation. What you just said is, is, is the same as um, um, the third part, um, the third point in your double uh, entry principle. Let's look at um, uh, the accounting equation, number two, point number two. Do, do, you, do you see what I'm talking about? In the double entry principle, the third point, it's saying, did the asset um, equity liability increase or decrease? You said toolbox is an asset is increasing and liability um, 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 uh, big, big builders of the liability is increasing. So basically I'm linking up uh, this uh, accounting equation to the third, third point of your double entry principle. Did the asset equity liability increase or decrease? So I'm saying when you're studying, don't study in isolation. Everything is related. It, 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 so don't study it in isolation to say, oh, so everything is just related. So once you understand the double entry principle you, I don't see a problem with you also understanding the accounting equation. Does it mean that whatever happens to assets happens to equity? 
Uh, Noren, I'm not sure. Just clarify that. Does it mean what happens to assets happens to equity? Can you can you just please clarify um, uh, clarify that question? Noren, I see your question there. You said, does it mean that whatever happens to assets happens to equity? So basically, if we increase asset, it will increase equity. So, so my question is, in what respect? So everything, every a transaction will 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 um will will each transaction will be different. So the first transaction, remember, it was uh, capital and bank. So capital increased and bank increased. So for me, I don't want you to take it as in if we increase asset, it will increase equity. No, take every time you do a transaction, look at it, it in its entirety. So don't uh, 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 um, memorize it as a uh, every time an asset increase in, in equity will increase. No, look at it as a transaction as it is. And then tool says, does double entry refer to equity and asset? No, double entry system refer. It's you applying asset. Uh, applying asset liability and equity into a transaction. So tools, does ent uh, a double entry, no, double entry is applying the, the debits and credits principle to equity, liability, and assets. It's not only to equity and assets, it's equity, assets, and liabilities. And what is equity? Equity is what forms part of equity? Capital, income, and expenses forms part of equity. So the double entry uh, principle is, is applied on assets, liabilities, and equity. What forms part of equity? Income, expenses, and capital. So uh, tools, I hope that um, clarified everything. Guys, um, so at the moment, I, I'm, I'm going to write my email address. I'm going to send you um, the slides. Please, please, please don't be ashamed to ask we all learning here. We are all learning. Oh, so basically drawings. So drawings is also decreases owner's equity. So drawings is also part of equity, but it decreases also um, owner's equity. So drawings would be the money that the owner would withdraw from 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 the company. That would form part of drawings, and that one also decreases owner's equity. Refilwe. Um, drawings also form part of owner's equity, but this is the money that. Even if it's not money, but the owner might take um, an asset for as, as a form of a drawing out of his company. So that will always decrease your, your owner's equity. So the next class will be uh, next week, uh, Saturday. Um, uh, we will, we will our next class be, please will you explain the module? With to us in terms of all that. Um, so the next class will be next week. Um, um, will be next week, Saturday, same time, 9 to 11 o'clock. So guys, I need um, feedback from you. Please comment on the chat. How was the class? Where can I improve? Where, where was I? 
talking too fast? Why was I too fast for you? Where you couldn't understand? Please uh, comment on the chat so that I, I think the next class I'll, I, I, I can improve um, so that um, everybody can just uh, be able to participate and um, and understand. Nadine, please, please, guys, uh, I would really, really um, appreciate your feedback and also for me also to improve on my side uh, so that the next class can be better for you. So the next class will be um, will be on the um, uh, the the coming weekend. Will be on the um, what will be next Saturday. So it will be the next Saturday. So, so the objective uh, of today's class was sort of like get you started just to understand the principle and for you to give you a nice booster for the next class. Um, yeah, this, this was just to give you a booster and keep you motivated and be positive that everything is just in your mind. Sort it out in your mind and you can do it. Sort it in your mind. Sort it out in your mind. Uh, Noren, uh, the next life. Guys, please, please attend classes and um, hopefully um, next week we'll be going in. Um, it's at the class late, but I have clarity. But a bit shy, but the next class I will be active. Okay. All right, Nadine. Not a problem, Nadine. I know that not everybody is um can, you know, um other people are shy, I know. Um, so guys, please, 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 uh, let's all learn together. Let's all make sure that we pass. And um I think uh, we can do it. We can do it. So I'm not sure when when is your assignment due, um, because the thing is, I think it's more important for you to understand um, what you're doing, because when you understand what you're doing, you don't have to cram, you know, everything you 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 able to to apply. So assignment two is due on the fourteenth. So. Um, so, so the assignment two is on the fourth. Today's the nineteenth. Let me talk. To you. So the assignment two is on what? 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 Um, uh, learning unit. I hope we covered a bit of learning of of the assignment. Because remember, what with the assignments, I think the assignments, uh, is not um, um, strictly on one um learning unit. It's um, as the learning unit goes, it adds all of them. So I hope this class helped eh, with learning unit one, two, three. I hope I hope this helped. I hope the class helped. Then uh, you'll you'll give me see, uh, feedback on the on the assignment next week. Hope this helped, guys. See you next week, eh?